Okay, Green Toe Palacio, let's, let's talk, let's talk. Uh, first off, what, what is Dylan Palacio up to? Did you graduate, first off, from, from, from Cornell? Man, I, I, uh, I'm still waiting to, for them to email me and be like, hey, we made a mistake. We weren't even supposed to admit you in the first place. But I, uh, uh, nonetheless, yes, I did. I did. Very emotional. Congratulations, by the way. Listen, I... Uh, you know, I, when people say congratulations, whatever it is, I feel like a lot of people go, like, oh, thank you, and then they like move on. Like it just seems like a formality, but like I can't stress how like significant it is to me and my family for me to walk across that stage. Like to be honest, like I'm, I didn't really want to even go to graduation because I knew how emotional it was going to be for me to see my friends and like everyone moving on next chapter of their life. And when I was there, like it was big. It was for my mom. You know, and my grandmother, you know, my grandmother says to me, Dylan, yo tengo gato en la pantalones. And if you don't speak Spanish, you understand that I'll tell you what it means. It means, you don't know what this means to me. Like, this is a dream. Like, she doesn't speak English, and yet I'm at one of the most prestigious schools in the country. So, some would argue even in the world. Where is she from? She's from Uruguay. Um, Uruguay, that, and that's who you represent when that's you. That's who I wrestle. That's who I wrestle for whenever I. World Championships, yeah, right? If, if I if I do decide to compete. But this year in Paris, I asked you. You don't know if Paris is on the table yet. No, I, Paris is definitely not on the table. Like for a lot of people, who didn't know. Like I've been tremendously hurt, um, emotionally and physically. Like I was so ready for this year, and like you know, open message to anyone. Life happens. And I was in such a great place, and like I was so ready to like, take the world by storm. And, like, I had so much behind me, and then like this, like it was all taken from me, like unfairly. And like honestly, like, I like, I could cry right now. What was the day? What happened? What happened when you hurt your knee? Well, even before that, like first the mental, like my best friend, best friend in the world, Jacob Pinsky, like grew up with him, kindergarten, he's been my boy, like everyone asks what L40 means, but let me tell you what the biggest thing means to, to about that and, and about me, it's friendship, real friends to the real end, and when you get a call like that, like everything slows down, like I broke down on my knees, I was crying in the middle of a soccer field, right under the bridge in New York City, and like, my life would never be the same, and people want to always tell me like, yo, time heals all wounds, then. like it'll be alright, that's, you know, I don't want to curse, but like, it's, it's bullshit, it doesn't, like, it puts a hole in your heart, and the only thing you can do is move on and, and, and learn to adjust to this new life, this new life without that person. And let me tell you something, like it was really hard for me. I wanted to go to the Worlds at 155 and he died in October. Like I was a 4 student in some semesters. I had like a 3-7 and my grade point average started dipping, doing bad in my classes. Everything came back to that. I had so much pain and I just had to leave school for a little bit. And I still like pulled out, pulled out good grades, like I had B minus, but I was at home for a lot of the time. Missed the 155 Worlds, you know, and then wrestling, like trying to come back into it. I had like weight problems because my knee. How did you hurt your knee though? Like, you Initially, guys? I really don't know. It could have been the wear and tear, but at Harvard was like the the main like boom, the pop. Like, Dual meet? Yeah, I was wrestling with a guy at 165, and like, and at this point, I thought I was gonna go 165, and I was like, all right, this is gonna be the move, and like I'm trying to get up, and my knee just literally. Bopped out. I heard a pop. I was scared. Like, I was like, "All right, this is the end of like my career." And, like, it was super, super hard for me. And Cole sat me down. And you know, thank goodness for Coach Cole. You know, you gotta value the people in your life who you might not even like. You know, and that's not saying that I don't like Coach Cole. You know, I'm also very fortunate that I do like Coach Cole. But people who will tell you what it is, 100 percent, 100 percent, being honest about a decision that they want you to make or what's best for you. And, and, and yes, people should support you, what you want to do, but they'll also let you know when you got too much blinders on, man. And Coach Cole sat me down and was like, listen, Dylan, I think your best shot's at 157. Like, I think we're the best team at 157. Like, you could do it. Like, you could make history. You could come back. You could you could do it for your friend. You could do these things. Like, you, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't leave this place. I was at a point where I wanted to leave school. Like, forget wrestling, I, didn't, I just wanted to leave school. You know? a semester lot. Yeah. Cornell. I was, I was that confident in walking away from everything, and I was being a little bit selfish. What it meant to my mom, to my dad, to my Uncle Steve, who pushed me to get there in the first place, I really wanted to leave. And you could ask any coach, I knew this was going to happen. Because I'm so, friendship means everything to me. It's all you have in this life, really. Your money comes and goes, all that comes and goes. And also, there's an inequality. So, like, if you have someone who's super rich and someone's super poor, 
that's not an even playing field. So people are always going to be on the equal level. But let me tell you something where everyone starts on a clean slate. It's love and friendship. No matter how poor you are, how rich you are, everyone gets the same opportunity to have the most amazing friendship, the most amazing love. And in that essence, with me, I knew what it was going to do to me. I, tell, I, I, I might even have it on this phone. I'll show you after. I send a text to all three of my coaches, Donnie, Mike, Damien, and Coach Cole. And I said, don't let me leave the path. And this was minutes after my friend died. Just to show you where my heart was, where my, my mind was, my goals were, before it all sunk in, before the world just seemed to fade away from me, I sent that to them. And were, were you on the soccer team at that point? No, no, no. This was at, on a soccer field when I was playing club soccer. The soccer it. team didn't do that great this year. I you I played on the ball. soccer team yes. for a minute, though. Yeah, I did. I did a season. Play so I one played. season, right? Well, technically, I was on for two seasons. Um, we did really good my first year, and the second year, I was still kind of hurt um, coming back from my shoulder because I got hurt in the round of 12 twice. Well, the All-American on twice because one year was going to be a fourth hit. Both at 65. Yeah, both at 65. Um, and then I came back both times and then I hurt my shoulders so I couldn't play my junior year. It's soccer off the table. That's not my... I've, I know you're a soccer player. And you got a fa your family's soccer people, right? I embrace opportunity, man. Like I, You could go another year of soccer at Cornell if you want to. I, I mean, I really school. could. I you really actually, because it's plus one. Yeah, yeah, I really could. Um, I could consider... Is, is it, I mean, if the World Championships are out potentially in Paris... We could I, maybe see you on the soccer team? I don't, well, this is the thing. It's not even that I'm done with wrestling. It's that my body, like I said, like it's physically messed up my shoulder, my knee, my hip. Like it, it all needs to be repaired because of what I went through this season. Like after, like I said, the mental stuff, then my fist, my knee. I literally, that, that tape at NCAAs that was on my knee, some people thought it was a sleeve. That was literally almost like a cast. I didn't take that off all three days. And it was at a point by the third day, I couldn't even run. I couldn't even walk. Like even now, like, my flexibility is so bad because my hamstrings and my hips are compensating. They're fighting each other. Yeah. So I I went from putting my head behind foot behind my head wrestling in the funk to being like uncomfortable with stretching, and it's really really uh it's new for me. But uh, I'm not putting anything off the table, man. I don't run from opportunity or challenges like a completely. I embrace them because of what it could tell me about myself, whether I fail or I don't. Like, I'll go to the world. I'll wrestle some guy from Azerbaijan who says he's 20 but should be 40 and somebody in a doping agency may, may or may not have disappeared. Like, I'll wrestle that person. I don't care. I don't care. I don't feel, I don't fail. It makes you dangerous. You know that, right? What? To, that makes you dangerous. That mentality makes you dangerous to, to, to the Russians, to the Azerbaijanis. That literally makes you very dangerous. Dude, I really don't know. Uh, I don't... That makes you dangerous to them. Okay, next question. Here's the next thing. Yeah. Okay. I've seen stuff you do on social media. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know what this guy's doing. Other times I'm like, this guy's brilliant. Do those coaches, did Rob Cole ever sit you down and be like, Dylan, you got to get off the social media? Yes. And, and what, what advice would you have Countless. for kids? Countless times. What, but you realize they throw most guys off team for stuff like that. Cornell's a little different. He runs things, he runs a different ship, though, well, right? So, so, so I'm gonna what's your advice about social media, and, and what would you say? Is there anything you'd change about it? Let me tell you something about social media, and I don't mean to rant. Like, well, I love to rant. I love to speak. It's not even rant. I don't like to hear myself talk. I love to engage in conversation. And with social media, let me speak a little bit of my piece. Like, I want to start a podcast and get into these issues. That's what I was going to ask you that. Next. All right, we'll go to that next. But go, but let's let, go to social, social media. media. I want to hear about that. Let me tell you something about social media. Get off it, to some extent. Okay, you follow these people who make you feel like your life isn't great. Okay, people who are Instagram models, all these fitness instructors. Like, I don't want to say names, but these people don't have biology degrees. A lot of them don't. They don't have nutrition degrees. They're genetically gifted, and because they're appeasing aesthetically to the eye, we follow them. We give them glorification, you know, and they actually start to think we care about their supplements that are filled with caffeine and fillers that would make you feel the, fail a dopa test, right? And we follow these people. And we start to think that ourselves are less. Our lives are less. FOMO, right? These people, they lie on social media, number one. They Photoshop their photos. And then even, let's talk about ordinary people. They post pictures with their boyfriends or their girlfriends are cheating on. They post pictures of their lives or the car that's not theirs. They got money that they just, that's the money going to their mortgage. Don't believe social media, okay, to an extent. Don't believe it because it's exactly what people want you to see. It's this clear, clear shut, clear shut vision of life that people want you to see. My life is so perfect. My life is so great. When in essence, it's really not. Right? A lot of people do that. Now, why am I so avid on social media? Because number one, think of it like this: the concept of the scrapbook is disappearing. It's gone. 
the, the days are past where you're gonna go in your grandma's cupboard and find a scrapbook of you when you were little, like playing with your sister, right? That's gone. Instagram, treat it like the new scrapbook. Document your life before it's too late, right? Life is precious. It's the new scrapbook. We're getting rid of them. Now it's on Instagram. One day you'll be 90, we'll be a generation, and it'll be so weird to interact with your grandkids and be like, look at my Instagram. And you can literally go back to the end or the beginning or whatever it was. You could show them important points in your life and what it meant to you with a caption. That's even deeper. You know, your grandparents' photos rarely had captions. They explained it to you. It's different. My social media, yes, I'm an idiot, but yes, I'm also deep. You know, I like to fool around. I like to have fun, but I also like to ask you about aliens or something like crazy. I feel like that's a gift. I have a gift. And I'm not being cocky. This is what people have told me. I have a gift to paint a picture, connect with people, get in touch with their emotions, speak for them, and live a life that they, they, they want to be a part of. They want to get used to. Like, how are you in an Ivy League school yet? You do all this crazy stuff. You're hanging out with, you know, crazy amount, you know, hanging out with girls, you're driving this crazy car, you don't have a license, allegedly. You're doing all this cool stuff, you got Yeezys on in every Snapchat, like you're making funny videos, what is it about you? Like, what is it? And I just be me. They say, what is the people's champ? The people's champ is everything the people can't be. So a lot of people are in a job, they're in a school, they can't, they, they feel like they can't curse. They feel like they gotta talk about God all the time, even though they're not that religious, they don't believe in it that much, because they feel like it's the right thing to do. They feel like they can't be themselves. I'm at a point where I have a distinct gift. I'm a ghetto boy. I'm going to say that. Shout out to Chico. Shout out to Mark Raganana. Shout out to L40, Jake Kapinski, Chris Horvath, Brett, all my boys back home, JT Forkin. He'll be out of Syracuse next year. He's another L40 athlete. These boys raised me. I didn't live on the street, but I learned lessons on the street. You know, the times I faced with Tom Hammer, they made me become a person who's seen that side, I've had friends die, OD, been in jail. And then I see people who are worth billions of dollars at Cornell, and everything in between, I meet people. That's something, those conversations I have are conversations people don't get out in the middle of Northwest Ohio or Kentucky or Florida. Why do I think people are attracted to me after nationals, for example? Yeah, that, that would be a question I have for you. Yeah. How does a guy who takes six in the nationals become the star of the NCAA tournament? I'm the star of the NCAA tournament because I keep it real. I don't hide who I am. It's all emotion, emotion. Like, I'll tell you what, my nationals did not end the way I wanted, okay? Hey, go ahead. But it kind of did. Yeah. You know, at one point in my life, when I was a TC3, I just wanted to start for Cornell. And then I adjusted, I acclimated. Okay, I want to start. Okay, I want to win. I want to be an All-American. I want to be a national champ. Okay. Was I robbed in that semifinal with some back points calls because some third-party review completely in contradicts with confirmation bias of the ref? Completely. Do I think I'd be Joey Laval? 100%. Do I think he got lucky? 100%. No knock on Joey Laval. I gave it everything I have. And it showed the next day the next day when I could barely walk. And I went out there and I got beat up by two kids. One kid I pinned, another kid from, we won't say where, who I would absolutely destroy. Both of them. Again, no knock to them. That's just me believing in me and where I'm from. I gave it everything I had. Every time I'd step between the lines, any occasion. And in there, I deserve to be in the finals. And in my head, it's as if I was there, which is really kind of sad. I believe I deserved it. But that's just life. You know, you don't really, you learn to move on. It's kind of what you leave behind that affects you. And I'm coming to terms with that. I'm moving on because wrestling is just, it's not who I am. It's what I do. You know, like I said in that interview, the reason I does it is for the heart of it. For the heart of it. So I would have loved to have been in the finals. That ref robbed me, robbed me of not only my, of what I deserve, but he robbed me of a part of me. And I hope he watches this. He took a part of me that day. Okay? Granted, like, I shouldn't have got taken down in the end, but, like, I could barely stand up and, like, it's a very way, rough weight cut, but it breaks my heart that he robbed me, but he robbed the people. Me versus Nolf was what everybody wanted to see. It was the story. It was the two clash of the guys who were just hanging out there. I could have got pinned in a minute. Who knows? He could have teched me. I don't know. But everyone wanted to see what had happened. That's definitely true. Um, looking at your future, I asked you. I'm like, what are you doing this summer? You're like, I don't know. I like that. I, because that's kind of like how I used to live. I'd work these camps for Eric Burnett, this camp you're at. I, I worked this when I was in college. Yeah. Anyhow, um, you don't know what the future holds at all. We don't know if soccer, we don't know if it's going to be Uruguay, right? I could do whatever I we, want. We don't know that. Yeah, okay, yeah. And is that, that's where your grandma's from. 
Yeah. And that's how you have. That's how you. Dad's have, from Colombia. And that's citizenship. Yes. Yeah, you get citizenship with both. Yes. Okay, yeah. but you go there Uruguay because yeah, that's yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah. It's and like the Dave Habit. It's the Dave Habit version because he's Slovenian. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's, so yeah. it's like you guys have like. Have you ever even been there? To be honest. To Uruguay? Or, yeah. Absolutely not. I love. I don't think I have ever been to Slovenia. I've never. I asked him that, and he's like, "Never been there." I never been there. It's a beautiful place. But, but, but the next question. Yeah. The future for you. Do you train at Cornell, or some people think, "Man, this guy, he's crazy. We don't want him around. He's nuts." Or do they want you around? Are you gonna stay there? Are you gonna move to back to the? You were from Long Island, right? Yeah. So, so do you go to the city? They have an RTC there now, Kettle yeah. Cross. Yeah. What's next for you? Do you where, where are you go? Well, two sentiments before I go on that. It's like I know, don't know. Uh, no, no, no stuff, I'm just I saying, don't know what they say. I'm just saying, like, well, I'll tell you what people say because people are honest. Like, hey, bro, like you're crazy. Okay, so I'm not crazy. Like, what is crazy? It's all relative. Like. You know, what's, what's, as the saying goes, like, what's chaos to the spider is, like, normality, like, the grasshopper, or some, some, like, old proverb like that, and I believe that's true. But what's really sad is when people, like, accuse me of, like, you know, like, being crazy and, like, doing drugs and fighting and shit, and it's, and that is sad, okay? We live in a generation at a time where if I'm happy all the time, want to talk to kids, do things for free, don't care about money, I must be on drugs. Let me tell you what the real thing is. Anyone who knows me, huh, ask them if I drink. Go ahead. Do you, drink? you drink? No, I don't. I don't drink. I think it's. I think well, I, I understand what it does for some people. Some people need, you know, the drink. You know, they want to feel loose. I, I act like an idiot on my own. Like I know what I want to do. I want to dance loud. I want to sing. I mean, I want to dance a lot, sing loud. Can you stay at Cornell? Yes, I can stay at Cornell. The, the, the invitations, okay. Yeah, I can stay at Cornell if I wanted to. I want to. I'm gonna be there. I want to help the next generation. You know, I want to be there for them. Help them come up the ranks. Beat those their demons. And, and learn through me. I want them to live through me as well, you know, and, and serve as a lesson. Like, listen, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't might not have won, but like, that's awesome. People also forget I'm an Ivy League graduate, okay, with above 3.5 GPA. Is it a biology degree? No, not biology. What's your degree? I studied business, sociology, and then like, a ton of minors. Like, I, and that was Even not a bunch of minors. A bunch of minors that had nothing to do with, um, nothing to do with what. I, it's not like I sat down and was like, okay, I want to study this, this, and this. I just went to class. So in my mind, that's a two hundred fifty thousand dollars education. It's like sixty grand a year. Uh, that means each class. It's like why wouldn't you go sit in on classes? Knowledge. So you would go sit in on classes that you no were yeah. taking. We're, we're not taking all the time. Like, nobody does sit in that. On nutrition classes. Nobody does that. Yeah, I know nobody does I love that. It. That's why I'm crazy, right? By definition. So that makes sense why that I'm That is a little crazy to me when you tell me that. Well, listen, dude. Like, like a teacher. I love knowledge. I don't like school. I understand okay. that. Now I love I love learning. As the pemophilia, it's like addiction to knowledge. I love it. Love learning why this does this and why someone did that. Is that like the genius complex? I don't know. I'm not calling myself over, a genius. You overthink things. I well, you extrapolate things to the nth degree. I just want to learn why and make connections. I want to hear conflicting opinions. I want to know why someone doesn't like Trump. I want to know why someone doesn't like Hillary. And I want to sit in between and watch both their points and hear why they they come to that rationale. And when I'm there in school, I hate school because. I love like learning, but I hate expectations. I hate my personal self-esteem being connected to a grade that I don't really have a say in. So many factors contribute to a test that you take one day that it doesn't, it shouldn't define who I am at all. And if you catch me on a Saturday, I'll read books. You know, I have, I want to paint. I want to paint with my with Derek Kajuski, a kid on my team. I want to paint with him, and nobody judge what I'm painting. I want to paint with no ego. I want to read books I'll never be tested on. That's 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 something I want to do, and like I could go and, and work. I'm an Ivy League graduate. I could go work somewhere. That's what I'm saying. Like that's you can go, saying. You can so like, to the city if so you when to. people tell me I'm crazy, what do you mean by crazy? Are you mad because I'm living what I want to do? Are you mad that I'm driving across the country doing clinics for free for kids when I could be charging a thousand a day and I'm living in my car and my car looks like a piece of shit right now? Because I'm living in it right now. There's supplements all over. There's water bottles all over it, and I'm living in it. Look at my beard. I haven't shaved. I'm wearing Compton hat because my hair is disgusting. And it's all for the kids, bro. Okay, when, when, the when kids. is the podcast coming? I, people want inside that Well, mind. let me tell you something. I have a lo- large room. What's the platform, by the way? I have a large respect for Coach Cole and everything he did for me at Cornell. I cannot, in good conscience, start a podcast during school. That's just the reality. Because, like I just said, I need to be real about how I feel all the time. I don't care if people listen. It's not about that. To be real, I got to tell everything. I can't be telling everything while I'm still in Cornell. So, 
the answer to that is when you're out of the now, Finger now. Lakes Wrestling Club. So now I'm starting it. So now you're no, starting No, I'm it. starting it now. Like, I, I'm going to start talking on my podcast about all types Dude, of cool What happens stuff. if your podcast gets you uh, out of Ithaca, New York? <laughs> then then it does. so be it. Then, then so it be it. Then I don't want to really be around, you know, like... I'm not gonna be anything crazy. Like I'm not like a racist or like something misogynist. Like I'm not gonna say stuff like that. I'm just gonna tell stories about my life, and I'm gonna talk to people who I know who have done some pretty messed up shit, or they lived through some pretty messed up shit. What's your platform? Who's your? Who does anyone come to you? Yet? Uh, you a few gotta... people have asked me to host it on their site. Like I don't want to get into specifics, but like uh, uh, a few guys to Flow Wrestling. Like I know Willie like was like, yeah, we should get flow on the podcast I would honestly like to be on flow but like I also feel like there's stuff that I couldn't talk well, about there's, I think that's a lot of it yeah, exactly it, it, so that's why and I don't want to be wrestling like I kind of want to be like a broke man's Joe Joe Rogan essentially and I listen to him non-stop 10 hours straight with him because he talks to the smartest people in the world and he's a comedian that's why he's so brilliant he loves drugs though okay he loves drugs I, yeah, give me that he does listen, love drugs he does love drugs and I'm not at a point in my life where I'm ready to do drugs or do like crazy things like he's done but I do believe that you shouldn't do drugs to escape reality. You should do it to discover yourself. And, and it's, it, blow, it, it pisses me off to some extent how when I was little and we were in D.A.R.E., I was the kid who got thrown out of D.A.R.E. every day. Get him out. D, we won't do drugs. Now we're up and I'm like, damn. All that D.A.R.E. line hates all of y'all and he loves me, right? All you let, all you, all you let him down, right? So, but at the same time, now I look back, marijuana is so bad, marijuana is like this. I'm not saying marijuana is good or bad, but you can't tell me that, number one, uh, the people who go to jail for it are disproportionately minority, and number two, you can't tell me that there's no medicinal benefit. You can't tell me those two things, all right? So there's a lot of pull shit they didn't tell me about marijuana, which makes me pissed off at the school system from back in the day. So now when I'm older, why are they? Why do they do that? Why do, do people smoke drugs because they smoke? I appreciate that. Do people smoke Freudian slip? Do people smoke marijuana because they're bad people, or are they trying to find something out about themselves in the privacy of their home, or with their friends, or get on a different? Why level? are all the states passing it as medicinal? I mean, Ohio has as medicinal. Michigan has as medicinal. The roots of it even being uh, everybody has illegalized. You know, the roots of it being illegalized was by I believe him. Uh, that guy Randolph, who ran all those racist news articles, because he had he owned stock in paper, and once the, like that machine came out, they were gonna he was gonna lose millions. So he needed to make marijuana illegal because hemp, hemp, hemp creep. You can build houses with hemp. It grows back faster. You can smoke it. You can eat it, right? But with the original shit, like uh, paper mills, he owned them. So he came out with reefer madness that black and Spanish people were running around doing crazy stuff, raping white women when smoking marijuana. That's why it became illegalized, okay? Not because it does bad things to you, because people own stake and keep it illegal. So just think about that when you learn about these concepts where, you know, people are in such rigid ideologies that they, they rarely look on the outside of things, you know? And, and no matter what I believe, I listen to people, bro. You believe in God on a Sunday? Tell me why. Tell me what it means to you. Tell me why you think that. You don't believe in God? And you think Neil deGrasse Tyson is the best thing since sliced bread? Tell me what. Tell me what he means to you. Tell me what he thinks. I want to listen to it. And I want to talk about it. And I want to gauge in ideas. And what's sad is at my school especially, a lot of times I had to keep my mouth shut. And I've seen teammates like Jace Bennett. He's a Republican. You know, we had a cry-in when Trump lost. And I wore my Hillary for prison shirt just to stir the pot because at places like that, they love superficial diversity, right? They want diversity of skin color, gender, you know, sexuality, things like that. They don't want diversity of ideas, okay? Republican students rarely feel welcomed and their ideas are shunned out. I had one friend wear a Make America Great Again hat, you know, on campus. People would smack his hat off, okay? And that's not just there, that's everywhere. You know, one side or the other, bipolar, partisan. Like, you need to get away from that. Like, like somebody said once, like, oh, I hate Trump, I hope he fails, like, I hope he like, gets so killed. That is the stupidest thing. Someone said, it's like wanting your pilot to crash the plane we're all on. And regardless if you like him or not, like, obviously you want him to succeed. Yeah, you're like, an American. That's like, a, that's like, this is a bad, and that's a mentality a lot of people it's have like for everything. at that point, right? Exactly. So, like, you know, like, all going back to it, like, yeah, I want to be real about things and like my podcast, I think I'm going to get into some crazy stuff. People also don't know amongst studying a lot, learning a lot. I'm also going to be a published author soon. I'm going to release my study on the mechanisms of trash talk. You want to talk about the science of trash talk? I studied it. My, my, uh, my co 
My co-author, Professor Niffin, at school just gave a talk in Utah about it at a sports conference. Evolutionary mechanisms and the effects of trash talk, what it does to a person's confidence levels, cohesion in a group. Why do we trash talk? What do we talk about? Women and men, do they talk about different things? It's crazy, and like this is stuff that I'm working on. I do whatever my heart's in, and I encourage you to do the same. You, you do your, I know you care about wrestling, yeah. yes? Okay, yeah. that's why you do this. That's why you're yeah. here on a Tuesday, yeah. right? Not because you're, you need to pay your rent, bro. Like, yeah, it's nice that it pays your rent. You know, like someone said, make your hobby your profession, you know, what you care about. And like, you know, no insult to specific greats, you guys who are great at wrestling. There's a surface selfishness that's, I guess people think you have to have to be great. But let me tell you something. People are gonna forget what you said. They'll forget this, you know, eventually. They'll remember one or two quotes, but they'll forget what you said. And to some extent, four national titles. Was it four or five? Or was it four or five world titles? Did you win bronze? No, I don't, I don't remember. Okay, they even forget what you did to some extent. People will. People will never, ever forget. Ever. How you make them feel. Ever. And that is the most real thing, and I live my life by that. When I come into my room, I make it my job to not meet these kids' levels of energy, enthusiasm, love, and passion. It's to transcend it. I come in here, music blaring, loud socks, ready to dab when I'm just showing a, a two-on-one or a Peterson. That's how I live my life, 100%, all the time. With my friends, my family, same people usually, and whoever I'm around, bro. Forget this live small, small talk. Talk to me about your dreams, your worries, your anxieties. Your, like, I'm that kind of person. So if you see me, don't feel weird coming up to me. People hit me up on Snapchat, Instagram, power guys. Like, yo, this is so weird. I just need advice. Why is that weird? Don't think that's weird. Please hit me up. Hit me up. I green, promise green you. Green toe palacio? Green toe palacio. I won't say that? why am I. Why is it green toe palacio? Uh, I can't disclose why, but uh, you'll find out, you know, watching my stories. Like, please hit me up. And if you want a clinic, please hit me up. Like, I'm charge. I'm really charge. Like, it's really how much you want to pay me. Like, people hit me up, like, all right, you know, how much you want to pay me? All right, how much you want? Let's negotiate. I'm like, all right, how much you want to pay me? I'm like, all right. You're available yeah. all summer. Yeah. Not next week. You're going to I'm Michigan. I'm literally living in my car right now. I was just in Ohio, book, did a few clinics. Da, da, da. Going to Michigan next week. Going to go to Michigan next week, you know, concussion awareness. And then I'm going <laughs> to, I'm just living life. Might go home right now, might not. Might go see this girl. She's cool. All right, so you got anything else for me? Just live your life, man. Like, like I said, YOLO. Like, I won't say YOLO because you only live once. But if you live once correctly, it's enough. So like, yes, I know, I know what it is. I know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a good place, man. I'm just, I'm excited about the future. And, and how can't you be when you have such good people around you, and you don't, you, you're not trapped in a box by outcomes. That's hey, all I'm saying. Thanks for the time. Safe travels. 27 minutes and 52 seconds of of madness that I love. Whoa.